about depression in, in the mind, the psychology of depression. <laughs> Who is this gentleman? Yeah, Freud. Freud. <laughs> Freud put a lot of importance of, uh, on the importance of loss in depression. And that remains very important. When someone develops the depression following an event, and even an event that could appear to be a happy event, it's usually because there's an important element of loss in that change. And certainly, changes in relationships are among the most uh, uh, powerful stressors in one's life. Now, there are several uh, points of crisis in the life of someone who is HIV infected. Learning about the initial diagnosis, having to disclose to family, starting medication, um, developing new symptoms. People experience these um, different life uh, changes differently. For someone, it could be a huge stressor. For someone else, it could be not quite as significant. So each crisis point is lived differently according to one's personal experience. Now, there are also losses that are not related to a particular event. For example, loss of self-esteem. Uh, feeling that one is not as desirable as a partner because one is HIV positive, changes in body image, for example, associated with lipodystrophy, not feeling as, as attractive. All these changes have um, an impact in terms of the potential to increase depression without being linked to one particular event. So I've talked about the biology of depression, I've talked about the psychology of depression. At this point, if you had to vote, would you say that depression is in the brain or depression is in the mind? In the mind. Okay, the, the, the mind, the, those who would feel depression is in the mind, you want to raise your hand? Okay, and those who say depression is in the brain? Okay. What about a mixture of both? Equal. Oh, okay. What about a mixture of both? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. I'm just going to add one twist to the situation. I'm going to talk about the influence of genes. Genes you inherit at birth, half from the father, half from the mother. You don't ask your opinion about which genes you're going to have. You just get them. And then you deal with them. You spend the rest of your life dealing with them. Like your medication. It's, it's like your medication. So, this is a slide that look at three groups of people. There's the yellow group, there's the pink group, and there's the blue group. And I'm going to tell you what's different about these three groups of people in a moment. And what they looked at is what is the probability that they would develop a major depression. So, the higher they go, you go, the more likely these people are to develop a major depression. And what you can see here is the number of stressful life events. You know that the more stress people accumulate, the more likely they are to develop depression. Well, definitely true for the blue people. So as you get from one, two, three, four life events, the likelihood <coughs> of developing a major depression increases. Yet you have these yellow people, you kind of pile up life events on them and it doesn't seem to be having any impact on their mood. And you probably know some people like that. It's just one stress after another and after another. And it doesn't seem to affect their mood at all. And then you have the pink group in the middle. That's really kind of, you know, somewhere in between. Now, what is the difference between the yellow people and the blue people? Variation in one area of one gene. And I'm talking about that one gene because it's the one that's been most studied. But the area of understanding the genetics of mental disorder is really an area that is exploding. And what they have found is that in people who pile up life events and don't become more depressed, they tend to have a variation of a gene that is different from people who are more likely to develop depression. 
So when we see someone who piles up the yellow group, they pile up the life events and nothing happens to them, we tend to see them as being stronger, stronger psychologically, stronger morally, kind of superior in some way. Whereas people in the blue group, you know, we may find that they're, they're not coping well, they're a bit weak, and, but the un, in fact, the, the only difference between these two groups is a small variation in one gene. It's, it's a gene that regulates the, the uh, production of the, reup, uh, the reuptake transporter gene. So that's the neuron I was talking about earlier. You have the serotonin which is released, and then it has to be taken back up in the neuron. And there's an interaction of that system with stress. And the variation in the gene will determine how much of that transporter you, uh, you make up under stress. So that in fact, in some people, if they have a lot of stress, it doesn't, almost doesn't influence that system that keeps working as usual. Whereas some people, if they have the other genetic makeup, under stress, that system is going to start malfunctioning. People who experience a depression tend to uh, blame themselves and feel bad about that. And they also tend to be labeled by other people. Whereas in a large part, it's determined by something that's completely out of their control, that they just inherit to that birth, and it depends on you know, how their, their, their body is functioning. But they also find that genes that regulate how your stress system works, your, your cortisol, how your immune system responds. If, if you have an infection, you develop more interleukin-6 because of genetic reasons, you may be more at risk for depression. So genes that affect a number of biological systems have, in the end, an impact on mood. That has very little to do with <coughs> moral inferiority. Even going back to childhood, we know that people who have a history of childhood trauma, abuse, or severe neglect, in, in studies that have looked at these people over time, we know that as adults, they are more likely to develop depression. Well, even going back to their early years, the genes do have uh, an impact. Again, let's look at the group of people. No maltreatment, probable maltreatment, severe maltreatment as children. What's maltreatment? If we look at the severe maltreatment, mm -hmm. the yellow group is what we tend to call the invulnerable child. They come out from these horrible childhood, seem almost untouched in terms of their likelihood of developing depression. They kind of survive that and then other life stressors. Whereas, in fact, the people with that variation that, that is more predisposes to depression have more impact of the same event in childhood. So genes, several genes, will interact with the environment. Some people will develop depression as a result, and some won't. Now, why is it that this gene has survived that long in history? I'm talking about the negative impact on mood, but it seems that the, the gene in this, these blue people may have some protective effect on, on the lungs or something. So it's not only doing one thing. And perhaps the gene in the yellow group protects against depression, but puts more people at risk of something else that may have nothing to do 